So actually you just finished talking about being the healer in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And often when we're the healer, that means that we're pouring out so much, but nothing is being poured into us. And so my question for you is, how was this process healing for you? How was it restorative for you? Did you get something out of it that helped you work through some of the things that you may have, you may have run into during these relationships? And then also, how did it restore you? I think the, the biggest thing that kind of turned everything around, because you know the book started in anger. It started in like pure rage, anger, frustration, and disappointment. And I, I didn't understand why it took me seven years to experience, but also another seven years to actually really like write it. I had to live more to figure out how to finish it. I had to change as an individual in order to finish it. It would have been impossible for me to finish it five years ago because I didn't have anything to give you. You would have literally had a half a book, like this girl is a mess, there's no solution and there's no hope. And that would just make everyone want to just get a razor because that's like, what are you telling me? So I think where it was restorative was not only just being like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate all of you for what you did to me, but more of the learning to understand myself, what makes me angry, what makes me happy, what I really want out of life, why I let them linger on. Do I feel hopeless, like I can't ever really find what I want, so I'm just taking what I get? Am I mesmerized by muscles and I'm just a super shallow person? So I'm just overlooking truly intellectual men. So it really made me question, question myself. And I felt restored actually not through the men around me, but by the women around me. So as I've gotten older, I went from having just peers that I'm forced to be around, whoever's in my classroom and who's ever on my block, to people that I attract. So even though I was failing on attracting a partner, I was growing in attracting doctors, dentists, engineers. Those are the kind of women that come to me. So that sparked something in me like, you can't be a complete wreck and wash if you're attracting intellects and sound individuals in healthy relationships with great morals. So. There has to be some good in you. So it's really the women that gave me the hope to not give up and believe that I have, I am something, even though I'm making really bad decisions. And the restorative part was accepting that I have no idea when this is going to get fixed, but there's so much work that I can do in the meantime. It's not like I just have to sit here like, oh, where's my prince? I'm so bored. I have a laundry list of household, spiritual, and personal goals, all healthy things, all non-destructive, non-alcohol related STD attracting things that I can do, I think to be even more valuable for the next person, I think I will actually be so complete by the time I stumble into my man. <laughs> so that was the restorative part, but I was scared actually, right when it was time to publish. The day before I said, you tell them all your damn business for what? You know, shame does something to you puts you in a hole and it makes you feel shitty. So I'm already a single mom. So that's like a form of shame that society makes you feel when they ask you like, where's your husband? And if you don't say that he died at war, they're like, mm. you know, that's already like, and I walk around with that every day. So being proud of my mistakes is probably the biggest thing that makes me feel complete. No one gets to like, like sell the information when I get popular and be like, did you know she did this? Like, yeah, we know she wrote a book about it. That's old news. So, yeah. It sounds like you have embraced your whole self. 
and, and yeah, that's awesome. Yep. 